14. And may I get a motion to call a uh, motion to amend or a, approve the agenda as follows. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And next to get an approval of the minutes of the July 13th meeting. I know it was so long ago. <laughs> I can't just go. Thank you. So can I get someone to make a motion to approve those meet those oh, to approve. Thank you. And second. second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Okay. Um, some new business is sort of hovering in town with uh, the development going in at 20, 227 North Main Street. I don't know if you guys are in the loop on that. And if you're not, let me enlighten you. <laughs> uh, there is a, there's plans to put in a, at this point, it was originally 19, it's down to a 13 house development in North, and just as you leave town, going towards the cobble, it'll be on your left, is the last Casey field on the left that was owned by DOT. And it's being, it's been sold to a developer and at the present moment, last they had a meeting last Thursday, which was the ninth. I think it was when I think it was or maybe it was Wednesday. I forget. But at any rate, to discuss you know this whole development, and to be really quite honest with you, I only had gotten a letter from them at five o'clock that night. And the guy in charge is a guy by the name of Paul Szymanski, who is representing Arthur Howland and Associates. And he is the voice behind the architects on this project. And I just found it really curious that they hadn't reached out to the sewer commission yet to have this conversation because it is, it's definitely a big project. And it is um, ideally what they're gonna have to do is hook up if, I mean, if this all gets approved, these are if, if, ifs, although I do think some form or another, it's, it will probably go through. Um, they are going to have to um, open up the sewer line at the Kent Community House and install a minimum of eight, but possibly 10 inch pipe to go from the community house up to this development for the 13 houses. And Kathy. How, how, how big is the pipe at the right community house? Four. Right now it's four inch. From well, at the yeah, community yeah. house. Mm -hmm. So even if it's an eight inch pipe, it has to come narrowed down to a four you, inch pipe. You can't do that. You got to be the same size or smaller. Well, they're going to have to. I mean, this is this is a complicated project. And I don't know if these guys realize what what they're in for as yet with this whole with hooking this whole thing up, because the whole point of this of, I guess, changing the zoning up there to residential two was to utilize the sewer system. So that, you know, how they make that, those connections, I'm not sure. Obviously that is beyond my pay scale, but I know that in order to service that end of town, it's gonna have to be a, um, a way bigger pipe than four inch. The that other four part, inch pipe, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go. That four inch pipe from the community house, does it ever, get to uh, as it gets to the center of town is it ever a larger pipe or does it remain four inches all the way down to the i'm i'm not sure i i bet lyle could answer that question lyle are you on it's muted oh i know you're there lyle <laughs> unmute yourself for me or ricky do you know no but i would assume it's larger than for down through Main Street, it's got to be at least it's six, but it's been relined, so I don't know could what's you, Could you make, could you speak a little louder? I can't hear you. So they relined it years ago, so I don't know what the actual size is now. Lyle might know what it's five I or thought, six. I thought, it was, I thought it was six inch going down Main, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought it was anyways. And it goes from four at the community house up, up to the end of the line up by, um, by yours. Michael's driveway. 
four inches all it that was, way. Yeah. So they would have to make it an Goes eight. up to whose driveway? Jennifer Weigel's driveway. I don't know where that is. Um, it's, I believe it's four inch going. Um, uh, it's it's the the white last white house on the right. Oh, the old uh, where Black it, Header House. I think that's what it. And Jennifer's okay. driveway goes up right there. Right, right, a, okay, got it. Got it. Right on the corner of her driveway. Okay. So they have to install a larger pipe all that way. Yes, yeah. down to the community house. Right. Maybe it's maybe it's eight inch going through town and it steps to four there at the community house. I know, but it but definitely, we would have, we it definitely would have requires that information. investigating it though, for yes. sure. Right. right. Somewhere we need, we're going to have to be very clear about what that is. Absolutely. And sure. But not only that, but at present, um, Bart and I had a meeting with uh, DEP last week and because we have to eventually address the you know, the problem with a permit. And as of the moment, um, they, they obviously going forward want us to change how we process the sludge. They are not a fan of us spreading it out on the field. And at some point, you know, not next week, but some point, you know, within the next year or two, it's gonna have to get hauled and burned possibly, depending upon where we go with the sewer plant. But taking all this into consideration, the reason why I reached out to Bart was saying that I knew I had gotten rumblings of this project, this development going in in the north of town, knowing we've been chasing Club Getaway to get them to come on the line. And also knowing that maybe not immediately, I mean, definitely not immediately, but at some point that I would imagine that field over that uh, the Casey family owns by the town hall very might very well might get a development in there. And in which case, you know, this is something we need to plan on for, you know, to be able to accommodate all of this development. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason for getting with BART to speak to DEP to see what we're up against and what they want from us and what we need to do to make things compliant and stuff. And this all got started with expanding the aeration tank and making those provisions. So I know BART will tune in at some point. I'm sure he's on the road right now, but um, he's in the process of working out the drawings or, you know, he's, he's starting the process. I mean, it's not going to happen overnight of what you know, you know, we need to do to start this whole process. But I just need the, you know, what happened is um, I don't think the zoning board or the other guys on the zoning commission realized that, you know, you can't, ju they just can't hook into the sewer commission, you know, right away and not have it have an impact on us because we, it's something we need to plan and provide for. So it's, you know, I don't know if they think it's a slam dunk, you know, that we just sign off on it, but it's definitely not, you know, it's definitely going to be an expensive project to get this whole thing going forward, you know, if to do an aeration tank and then figure out how we, you know, deal with, you know, getting rid of all the septage and stuff, if they don't allow us to, you know, spread it in the fields. Are, but, they, are they aware of the volume of septage that's being accepted yes. in there? Yep, they are. They are. They said nothing about it being out of compliance with the um, it's, permit limitations. It's, it's a little close. I mean, it's it's like I think ten percent higher than it should be right now, from what they were indicating. They, I think it, it right now, Lyle, isn't it like one forty two or something like that? And they wanted it at, they want it like less around half, and I think it's at eighty right now. Um, you are you to talking to numbers that goes through the plant? I'm talking about the septic haulers that are dumping into the lagoon down there i think that's where that that's where the uh, majority of that solid comes from to get spread isn't it Lyle? yeah the, quite a bit of it comes from that but um they, there's also nothing in our permit that says that we can't be taking that amount there's no there's no uh no figure on that at all in the permit from what I I know, Bart, bart's made a couple of comments in the past i thought 
right, well, knowing that going forward, we won't be able to continue at what we're doing. And that's that was the whole point is to try and plan, you know, set this meeting to try and plan for the future and see what we can take. And, you know, maybe we have to lose a hauler or two to be compliant. I mean, I don't know. I mean, these are all things that, you know, we need to work through, you know, through the commission. Um, by being compliant, that means you accepting less or hauling more away from here. I mean, is, are there two ways to be compliant? Haul less and or haul more away or? Uh... We would probably event, uh, from what the, um, the man um, at D, Michael Hart, who we had talked to, um, he was, I mean, he see, I mean, I'm not going to say he was, he would be possibly willing to roll over on this deal, but he's a little bit more lenient than a couple of the other people that were in that conversation. And ideally they want it hauled away at some point going forward. Once we make all these, you know, once we get the permit in place and we, you know, know what the plan is capable of doing and what we're taking in every day at some point, that's ideally where they want the plant to go as far as so, so when, when they and when we put a new plan and they have to approve it they're going to look at the entire operation and they're not going to approve spreading it on the field anymore that's, no, that's, that's, no, so that's it, it would all have to be hauled away anything any new deposit would have to be hauled away anything new correct eventually that's the that's the road we're going to have to go down is to haul it and have it burned burned I mean, Kent is like the last sewer plant that operates this way. And she said, you guys are so small. And I'm like, so <laughs> it works, right? But that's, but that's not gonna, that's, that's not gonna last for a lot longer. Have they said why it's unacceptable to, to spread it out? Just environmentally. You know, they're worried with the river. I mean, not that we're throwing it in the river or anything, but they're just because we are so close to the river and it has been going on for so long that they're, they are concerned that, you know, eventually, I mean, it can only, the ground can only just take so much, even though, you know, the belt press is helping that situation along, but that that's kind of where it's going. So uh, we then have to increase our charges to the haulers. Um, once we have to start hauling it away and burning it, I mean, everybody's going to have to pick up that tab, but right. the, the thing that um, has me concerned, I mean, the thing that we need to, to focus on is this project up the road and, you know, getting, you know, the plant in shape to be able to take that. Because the other thing is, is getaway is definitely running out of time to, you know, keep operating the way they're operating, you know, and he, you know, for him to put in, you know, brand new septic field just does not make any sense. It's way too expensive. He logically, the best way for him to do it is to hook into the sewer. You know, uh, on, the other, on the other hand, these developers, it make more sense financially for them to put 13 standalone septic systems in and get involved with running a uh, pipe down Main Street to wherever the uh, 10 inch line terminates. Well, if they choose to do septic, then they can only put in 13 houses on that development. They can't oh, put okay. the, they can't put in the, um, 19 was it yeah, no it's 19 is hang on i forget how many it is right hang on, let me look. 13 houses and i want to but they're going to have to take off four how many acres is that total 13 acres you want to put in some kind of a house with a so they have 13 and they'd have to take away three houses to if they were going to do septic So have any, have you seen the drawings for this thing? I sent you a copy of the drawing. I don't know if you all can see it, but that is, that's, and I, Joyce will resend it out to everybody to take a look. I'm sorry, I forgot to, I've been crazy busy and I forgot to send it to everybody, but that is it in a nutshell. So maybe uh, we should send a, a letter to Shemansky and Howland and tell, recommend that he, talk to the commission before they draw any conclusions. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That 
that goes without saying. And I, I, I went over to the town hall today because I had to do something else for the restaurant and I made joy, uh, made uh, Donna aware of what the problem is too. I said, you know, it's, this is not just a slam dunk that this thing gets approved. I mean, you, you know, if it does go, if you, they do hook into the sewer there, it's, it's a complicated, it's, you know, there's a lot of work that has to get done before this whole thing can happen. But I didn't know if anybody had been aware of it. So I just wanted to make you all aware of what, you know, work we have ahead of us to, you know, to deal with this, this development. So there's really no work that has to be done at the plant. You're just talking about. Eventually, yes. Eventually, yeah, what not, has to, not, not eventually the aeration project. system, ha the we have to put that new aeration tank in, in order to, you know, to deal with, the, you know, take the system as it is, you know, to expand the system that we're doing and then haul it from there. You know, once it goes through that system and then haul it away. Just out of curiosity, how far from town uh, does uh, a development have to be for the sewer commission can say, we don't go that far, or we do go that far? Well, I mean, it, in talking with Bart, you know, if we, the whole point of this development, when they put this zoning in, which is R2, was to be able to hook into the, the whole point was to hook into the sewer. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was, that was one of the, 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 you know, the, the defenses of putting this development thing in but you know what we've done in the past like up at brookwoods where they have their own self-serving septic you know septic or sewer system up there um we we can't allow that to happen here it has to it has to go i mean they could go on their own septic system mm -hmm. but we won't let them put their own sewer system in like they did up at brookwoods and if they hook into the kent sewer system then we have to expand what we're doing in order to take on this extra septage. In, including, you know, this is also to include, you know, Club Getaway and other developments if they should, you know, other expansions if they should happen. I mean, if the Kent comes back on the system, that's another one, you know, that's while yes, it's already hooked in, but that's another, you know, usage to be considerate of, that's all. Uh, what, I guess what I'm asking is, is there a regulation or statute that requires us to provide sewer service to, up to a certain distance? I mean, would we, if somebody builds another half mile up or a quarter mile or three quarters mile up, are we required to service that that place or? Uh, I I don't know. I don't okay. think it'd be, it would be a requirement. I mean, if somebody built a, a development, let's say a mile out of town in any yeah. direction, and the sewer was not there to begin with, and they wanted us to be attached to it, be hooked up to it. I mean, yes, they, if they, they laid the lines, they, and we could take that capacity, then yes, it would work. Are we required, required to expand capacity to end, to the nth degree to, to uh... No, but we were, it was part of that zoning that went in to allow development north of town which is okay. why that property was bought to to serve you know to be a you know a 13 house community wow. development okay. i mean it, that one specifically was built or you know the zoning on it was geared towards it going on to town sewer right. anything else other than that i don't know of down the road but i'm just no i just you know i've just been after bart for you know i know you've all heard me harping on it but it's just to say that we really do need to plan for what's coming up down the road for the sewer commission. So what's Bart working on? Is he actually designing this? Uh, yes. So he's going to be the engineer. Of the he's going to engineer it. And he, once he gets a preliminary set of drawings together, then we have to reach out to the people at deep and have them, you know, review what he's done so far. And then, you know, see what they need, what they want, what we can do, what we can't do. And he's going to oversee it. <clears throat> but I just wanted to make you guys all aware of, I mean, because I was like so surprised at five o'clock last week to get this letter saying this is going in and, you know, we're asking you for permission to do it. And I'm like, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. You know, it's a little bit more complicated, complicated than you think. So.
Right. Anyway, I just, anybody have any other questions or observations or concerns or? So I have one question, the uh, thir 13 units as opposed to 10 units, is that because the land won't support the septic systems or is that because zoning has decided that the- uh... Land won't support the septic system. Oh, okay. And so they would have to go down to 10 units. You should listen, that meeting, there's another meeting coming up in a month and you all should really tune into it. It was, it's, it's really interesting because this zoning thing sort of slid through pretty quickly to get it rezoned for a development. So and did, did zoning ever approach us about this sewer not, business? No, no. Wouldn't that have been an appropriate thing? For one them? would think. <laughs> one would have thought. One would have thought that the guy would have reached, you know, you know, it's like when people go to build something and they come in with a set of architectural drawings and go, here it is. And it's like, wait, wait, you know, back up 10 paces. You yeah. know, you should have saved whatever amount of money you saved. Come talk to us first to see what we can do and what you need to do to make it work. And no one ever does that. I mean, it just astounds me that you know he's got this huge project going in and just sent a quick letter right before the meeting and didn't say you know come to the commissioner make you know head to a meeting to see what they need to do that's all so anyway i just wanted to make you all aware that's all that that's coming down the road and it's definitely something we have to deal with and you know the commission definitely needs to look into doing this whole aeration system and then and then seeing what the new requirements are that the DEP is going to impose on the the water treatment plant and hopefully it's not too crazy so um old business regulations um part of the regulations that I had spoken to Joyce about and it needs it needs BART to go over a couple of uh, fee structures. But the one thing I wanted to have laid out is when someone does do a development like this or home or new business or whatever, is that there's a kind of chain of command of what they need to do to apply for a, you know, to hook into the town sewer. So we have been working on that. BART needs to plug in a few more numbers here and we should be able to have it for the commission to look at next month but you know it's just you know if you look on the sewer commission what to do it basically tells you what the fees are to hook up a one bedroom house a two bedroom house and that and a business and a restaurant and that's kind of it it doesn't tell you that you know what inspections are required or you know how we have to sign off on this or you know it's just it doesn't list any of that information for someone coming on as a newbie and that is something we're working on right now just to get that in place so that, you know, when someone wants to look at, you know, it's like, you know, state planning, you just have a, a schedule of things you do. And I just thought that would be really beneficial for people coming on because in the past we have, we have paid BART's fees for some of these inspections and it shouldn't, it shouldn't come from the sewer commission. It should come from the property owner. So I just want to have that, that fee structure out there so that, these people are aware of it. Um, I guess that sort of covers public communication as well. So, and I don't think you've heard enough from me. So why don't we go to Lyle? Why don't you give us your report? Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, since this is a two month meeting, I'll give you readings from July 1st, we had 1.82 million gallons come through the plant. That's uh, 386,000 gallons, uh, no, hold on, 58,000 gallons per day average, 387 gallons, 1,000 gallons came from Kent School. Average BOD removal rate was 98%. Average total suspended solids removal rate was also 98% and average influent pH was 7.3. For August, we had 1.84 million gallons total go through the plant. That's 60,000 gallons per day average. 289,000 came from Kent School. Average BOD removal rate was 99 and total suspended solids removal rate was 98% and 
average influent pH was also at 7.3 as it was in July. Um, I had new Milford septic clean off the pump stations and the re, uh, return pump house at the plant. Um, sometimes bi yearly, we have um, clean off the, uh, the sludge blanket off the top of the pump stations, but since the, the flow has been lower, we've only had to have it done once this year. Uh, we got two effluent beds were clean. One is online, two are shut down for drying, and one remains ready to go. We had a contactor fail for blower number one. John Gleason called him, and then he's got one coming on. It's on order. And this is more of a question. Um, the modems for the RACO alarm agents need to be upgraded. I believe we budgeted for this at the beginning of the year. Um, there's like $3,200. We have, we have three units, but the latest purchase we have already has the 5G modem in it. The other two need to be upgraded before that tower gets changed over to 5G. So I believe when we is that, that happening? By the end of the year, they say. Okay. So uh, alarm agent company has been after me. You know, I know we're going to get it done. And how much is that going to cost? About $3,200. $3, well, Obviously, we have, we have, right at the right when we were coming up to the July 1st budgeting, I think Alyssa, you and I talked about that when we uh, talked about yeah, the allocation of funds for the sand beds. Ask me if anything yes. else was coming up. That did was, those get did those get filled? No, we put we put that on hold for the time being. Okay. I lost you. Um, we we're going to do them this fall, but if we have to do, uh, they want those sampling wells repaired and uh, that are in the beds and everything. Um, that will probably be addressed before we replace that sand. Okay. So do I have approval to order those modems. Barbara, is there money? We, we can take some of that money and I budget. think there's plenty. Yeah, I mean, I mean, two hundred dollars. We can break the bank. Okay. All so right. get that ordered then. Okay, that's we all. We need a motion to pass that or anything, or we just can do that. I can't remember. Okay, just checking. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. You're up. Okay, let's see. Everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay. So this is the actual versus budget, typical report that I give. This budget is only for the two months that the actuals are showing. So you can see our revenue is actually better than what we budgeted. So that's always good. All the other expenses are pretty much right in line with what was budgeted at this point, except for the outside services. We had the the New Milford Septic, which I think Lyle just talked about, and then the Haymore services. And I think we only budgeted for the Haymore. I don't think we budgeted for the New Milford Septic one, but anyway, everything else is pretty much in line. And at this point in the year, even with our transfer to capital, we are running at a $14,000 surplus. So that's very nice. That's good. Our balance sheet looks good in comparison to last year. Our cash position is up by $43,000 over last year. So that's lovely. And then this is the July and August disbursement journal because I don't think I had reports for last month. Did I? I don't remember. But anyway, if I did, then July is a duplicate. But this is July and August. Okay. And the only thing of interest here is um, we actually reimburse the town for gasoline usage and diesel usage and equipment. And so that happened at the very end of the fiscal year. So it ended up in this fiscal year. The annual loan payment on the, the bigger, the biggest USDA loan always happens in the very beginning of July. So that is what this $38,000 is. And let's see, I guess the 
August insurances. Is that what I highlighted, I guess? Yeah. Do we always reimburse the town for the gas and diesel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The town bills the sewer commission, the school, and the fire department for usage of gasoline and diesel. Okay. So I guess I think I meant to highlight the 2100 for the tractor time and the planting of the sorghum, but I highlighted the wrong one by accident. But anyway, so between July and August, we've transferred $6,300 into the capital reserve. So that's good. And that's all I had. It's so early in the year that's not a lot of activity yet. What's the one with, where are we? Hmm? I, there was something with transfer something to Kramer or? Or maybe I'm well, I, I transferred funds from the this over here, the 50,000 from septage no. over to operating. No. That... Oh. Here, there. Oh. oh, that's the transfer to capital. No, Don Kramer. Oh, that was an NSF check that okay. was paid for sewer usage and it okay. bounced, but I'm pretty sure Debbie has collected that back. Okay. It just shows. Okay. Doesn't happen often, but every once no. in a while, okay. we get a wayward check. <laughs> so I just need approval of the disbursement ledger. Okay, we get a motion to approve the uh, disbursement journal for July slash August. Move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I don't think Debbie is on, or is she? Is Debbie here? I did. Okay. And no Bart. Bart? No Bart. I don't, I don't think Bart's here unless he's sleeping in his car somewhere. I had his picture on the screen a moment ago. Oh, did you? Yeah, he yeah. was there and it says he's trying to connect to audio. Okay, then hey, let's try and... I know it's always a struggle for him because he's always coming from, from work to somewhere. I think I've got in on audio. All right. He's there. Apologize. Apologize for being late and not having the, all the Zoom set up. Do not worry. So Bart, I was explaining to everybody about the, um, that you and I had met with DEP in trying to uh, see what we're, we need to do with the plant and, you know, exp the expansion project that you and I have been working on with the aeration tanks and stuff like that and expanding our, our services. And I also mentioned, told everybody about the uh, project that housing development going in up the road. And, you know, so I thought maybe you could shed light on, you know, what you're, what we need to do to uh, get, you know, go forward with the, with our permit and where we're headed at the sewer plant there. Sure. What, what the DEP uh, said about our permit was that it, it hasn't been renewed, um, and there are a lot of things that need to be done in order to renew it. <clears throat> and the, the, the biggest um, issue relative to uh, renewal <clears throat> has to do with, <clears throat> excuse me, has to do with uh, the uh, treatment requirements at the plant, uh, both for uh, the sewage coming in and for what they call over the road or septage. So and the and then the uh, land disposal portion of our our operations. So uh, the the DEP wants to see a a, a more stringent uh, uh, treatment uh, permit, which you know requires a a little bit more treat uh, treatment of the waste before it's discharged to the lagoons, <clears throat> primarily to control our uh, nitrogen being discharged. And the, uh, the, the that puts a little wrinkle in our our um, our initial thoughts about what our uh, treatment process was going to be uh, in order to meet the new requirements. It may not be able to meet exactly be exactly what they're already. There may need to be additional steps that we have to take in order to treat it properly. Um, Right now, we, we have like an average uh, total nitrogen, which is what uh, the nitrogen is the nutrient that 
EVP is most interested in. <clears throat> so they they have a um, want to put a limit of 10 milligrams per liter uh, as a as an average. And right now the uh, the commission is uh, discharging uh, right about 23 milligrams per liter as an average. You know, there's days when it's uh, much higher and days when it's much lower. But uh, <clears throat> the uh, to try to consistently meet the the new um, new nutrient level for uh, the new uh, discharge level for nitrogen, we'd have to uh, uh, give some serious thought to just just how the treatment process is going to be. <clears throat> uh, but what they did say is that we can continue operating under our existing permit and allow uh, additional facilities to uh, come uh, be added uh, to the treatment plant. Um, but as, as soon as we start to do major work to the treatment plant, uh, like like the aeration upgrade, uh, redundant aeration tank, then then, then they're going to have to issue a new permit. So we're we're safe for things like club getaway uh, for miscellaneous house there here and there, uh, and for uh, the, the subdivision that they're thinking about on the north end of town. Um, we, there are steps we have to go through to, to prove that all works out. Uh, and we have to apply to the state in order to allow them to connect. But there seems like there's a, a path forward for for those. Uh, with with the septage, uh, you know, uh, we've been talking about the treatment of the septage for for a long period of time. And what they they uh, they're really discouraging the continued uh, processing of septage, uh, but. They didn't outright say, no, you can't do it. They just felt that it would be the investment that the commission would have to make in order to meet the requirements. It may make it uh, uh, too expensive to uh, continue that um, that process. And similar with the, uh, with the land application of our sludge, uh, <clears throat> in order to meet their uh, new, not new national standards, but to meet the current national standards, as to the way we actually operate the land application process, it would require a significant investment um, on the commission's part in order to meet that. And we, we'd have to do a lot of work to convince them that we could do it in a way that would be uh, meeting those standards. So there would be considerable approval effort uh, associated with that. <clears throat> the one, the, both with the septage and the land application, <clears throat> So those two activities are well known to the uh, to DEP, but they're not actually written into the current permit. So if we wanted to continue those efforts, they would uh, want to see our new permit include those activities, and and then that's where uh, the uh, negotiation process would begin about what that new permit would actually uh, read and what it would include. So. Um, <clears throat> is, is Roland Denny still in um, the DEP? He is, but he's in a in a different section. <clears throat> it, the uh, DEP is involved has a, uh, several different uh, sections involved. Uh, one is municipal wastewater treatment. <clears throat> the uh, the other is uh, um, ground groundwater discharges. And then, then there's several others that have to do with hazardous waste and, and a variety of other things. But you know, we're rolling is in the, the municipal section, but because our our discharge is into groundwater, we, we're working with the, currently the lead people involved are, are the <clears throat> groundwater people. <clears throat> and there, there's a, you know, Roland is actually kind of in favor of land application Whereas the people at the, uh, and he's in the municipal section, uh, in the uh, groundwater section, I, I, they have uh, less high opinion of uh, how, how useful it is for, for uh, land application of the sludge. Do, <clears> they so all, that, that's, do they all talk to each other though? Because I remember a couple of years ago, he, like you just said, he was totally in favor of us doing the land application and I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying he can come to our rescue, but if he could help, you know, sort of weigh in on what we're doing. And yeah, 
Well, what will happen is the uh, <clears throat> once we get serious with the permit and provide them some information, <clears throat> and serious with uh, you know to, like adding additional users uh, to the either the subdivision or getaway, <clears throat> we would submit an application to the DEP, and then they get together in a big conference and uh, and talk about it. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> but what what we can do to kind of uh, jumpstart that whole process is is to continue working on the uh, uh, preliminary engineer's report for the uh, aeration tank upgrades <clears throat> and then submit that report and then ask them for a preliminary meeting with both the municipal section and, and attendance and the groundwater section and attendance and hopefully they'll they'll get together and <clears throat> bash out some uh uh, understanding between the different units that 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 makes up DEP. So, but it's it has to, has to be pretty clear that it's not a straightforward process to to get to a point where, they, you know, uh, the town of Kent is probably one of the only treatment plants that actually does land application in in Connecticut. So it's not a really well known process to them, and it's also not a process that they are really interested in um, allowing to progress much much over and above what it is right now. So. When you're talking about the nitrogen and you said 23 units per, per something that cut down to 10 units per, that's obviously cutting it by over 50%. Now the concern here, I assume, is ru eventual runoff into the river. Is that what their concern is? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It, there, there's two, two concerns there with the the uh, the municipal section is worried about runoff into the river, yeah. And the uh, groundwater section is just uh, doesn't want to see the uh, groundwater uh, below the plant exceed the uh, the groundwater levels that for for the class of groundwater that's in there. <clears throat> it's a it's what they call class A groundwater, so it's pretty clean groundwater, right? And <clears throat> then they don't want to see it become dirty because of what the what the plant does. That, so that problem could all be solved by hauling, hauling the, the dried sludge away. Is that right? Um, not the nitrogen altogether. It, you know, it, it may help, but it, uh, it, it, it won't take away their, uh, their desire to have a, uh, a, a, what they call a 2020-10 permit, uh, 20 for BOD, 20 for uh, suspended solids and a 10 for milligrams per liter for nitrogen. I mean, so if it's hauled away, it doesn't make any difference to them. They're still going to require this upgrade or whatever whatever that upgrade is. Yeah, yeah you're, you're you're mixing two different things into into one. You know, one one is the discharge of the liquid waste, and the other is the discharge of the solid waste. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And the, okay, and the okay. twenty the yeah, the 2020-10 is the liquid waste, and the, the solid waste is the whole issue altogether. So. And what's the process of removing the nitrogen from the liquid waste? Well, they, they have a um, uh, processes that uh, are biological nutrient removals, and pr primarily it's uh, just uh, treating the waste um, to the point where the, the, you develop the bugs in the treatment process that allow allow them to change the nitri nitrogen in the, in the system from uh, nitrous oxides to uh, uh, nitrogen gas. And it's called denitrification for fancy technical term. And then um, that, that nitrogen gas is just emitted into the air? Or is there then another process that that's got to be filtered? No, it, it just discharges into the air. It, you know, our, our air is, uh, you know, more than... 70% nitrogen for the most part, so okay. it, uh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter that it gets discharged into the air as yeah. nitrogen gas. So, and how expensive is it to cut our nitrogen in the water from 23 units per to 10 units per? <clears throat> well, it, it can can be expensive, but uh, I, I don't want to try to. Um, um, make a guess at that right now because some of the okay. ideas I have floating around in my head may may allow us to do it relatively inexpensively and, and still still achieve the goal that we had of uh, having a 
uh, uh, redundant treatment system. Okay. So okay. I need a little, little bit more time to be able to, to flesh those solutions out and get some ideas across. Okay. Great. Bart, thank you. Does anybody else have any questions for Bart? It's a quick um, one. If you do the expansion on the plant, Bart, would you be able to incorporate some of the septic water into that? <clears throat> It, it, it's, it's possible, yes. <clears throat> um, but one one of the things that <clears throat> one of the things that that excuse, sorry, allergies are kicking in today. So, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> the uh, to, to one of the things that the that happens <clears throat> when you discharge the septage waste into the system is it, it takes up capacity that that you were hoping to have for. Uh, people out out in the in the town, so yeah, you're serving the serving the town's people um, by uh, accepting septage, but you're also limiting how how many people you can allow the town to grow to and still be served by uh, the treatment plant. <clears throat> so there, there's a little bit of a trade off there, and septage is notoriously difficult uh, and highly concentrated waste to try to tried to treat so it's um, um it, it requires careful thought before you do that so all right another question that came up earlier is the uh the piping in through town and you had told me last week that the in order to accommodate the development out of town that it had to go at least to an eight inch pipe, possibly 10, but where it meets at the community houses, how big is that like six or is it smaller? And no, it's a, in the, to, to what, to the last manhole that's considered a public manhole. Is, is that the one is, by uh, Britain's? Yes, one okay. by Britain's. It, it, and the, even though the next line goes out to, uh, it serves three houses. Right. It's not considered a public line. You know, the, the commission has been in there. It's it's uh, uh, fixed a break. It's you know it's cleaned you know cleaned it out just because it was discharging waste out on onto the ground. So we we took care of that. But that that was considered just a single uh, a private line that serves right. more than one home. So uh, that and that line is an extraordinarily bad condition and would never uh the commission would should never allow anybody uh, beyond who's being served there already connect to it so okay yeah. so at the community so the piping through town help me understand this as it goes up route seven is how big or is it or is it changed in different sections that I, it's mostly 10 inch and that last section could be eight inch but i'd have to look uh, again, at the asbels, but okay. it's, it, it's either eight or ten inches. So, uh, you know, then the new development would have to bring a new eight inch down down to that manhole in order to to service their their development. Okay, and did and sort of a sideline, but by the railroad, did were they supposed to fix that sewer? Were we they supposed to fix that sewer line, or is there something that was supposed to get fixed? underground or am i just thinking it was something else weren't they supposed by to the redo, yeah by the railroad crossing weren't they supposed to fix something in there or we fix something i'm not sure i'm just maybe i'm remembering something else entirely um i i believe that we were able to line underneath the, the railroad okay without okay. without problems and the, the latest thing that went on with their with the uh, railroad was the connection of the uh, uh, the, the community uh, bathrooms and, and behind the railroad station. Okay, all right then. I'm thinking of something else then. <clears throat> Thank you. Does anybody else have anything to either ask or ask Bart or whatever or say? All right. Well, we will uh, see what happens with this development up the road and see what you know what their plans are and uh i mean i know they're yep. gonna at some point hand off some drawings 
Um, one more question, Bart. If they don't hook into the sewer, how many, and they decide to go septic and not a, not a system like Brookwood's, which is their own sewer system up there, how many would they, would they be, would they have to take away three houses or how many houses would they be allowed on that, that lot there? Uh, well, it's it's tough to say. You know, the zoning up there allows for pretty you know, dense <clears throat> development, but it, there, it, it would never be 13 houses. It, it's more likely to be on the range of, uh, you know, five or six houses as a as a real guess. You know, so the the level of uh, density would you know drop significantly. So. Okay. All right. So if he's going to continue that development, then he has to. If he, if he plans on putting in all those houses, and I don't know what zoning is going to do with it, but or how whatever they're going to sign off on, then he has he would have to put in he would have to hook into the sewer line. And one of the things that uh, you know Lyle forwarded me the uh, the request um, to the commission to determine whether there was adequate capacity or not. Right. And what what I intend to do is I'll, I'll put together a draft letter um, that that provide you with what my opinion of, is of that and, okay. and, then, and then the commission can consider whether it wants to send that letter to the uh, the developers or not at that point so okay because I know they have another meeting coming up in October I think I'm going to say it's like the second Thursday or somewhere around there of October just to let you know the timing on it yeah well, in the next couple of weeks I'll, yeah. I'll have that letter put together so that uh, you know, we can get it out to you folks and you can take a look. So, okay. Well, we, I think it would, we, if we could get a letter drafted or you could get, I say we, you could get a letter <laughs> drafted and we could get it to them, you know, get it to the commission to have them sign off to approve it and then get it to them some in a timely fashion. I think that would be a good thing to do. So yeah, not, I know, and I know you're busy, so I know you need this like a hole in the head, but I know it's something we're going to have to deal with. So, yeah, yeah. Like I say, in the, in the next couple of weeks, as, okay. as soon as I can put it together, you know, I'll put put aside the treatment plant stuff for a little while and okay. focus on that. So. Thank you. All right. Does anybody else have anything else in or we're good? We all have a glass of champagne from that bottle I'm back here. Oh yeah, <laughs> someone gave it to me because I, I, some I let them stay at the hotel for a couple of extra hours and I didn't charge her. So she goes, "Here, have a glass of champagne." I'm like, "All right." <laughs> See, it's not all bad <laughs> owning a restaurant. Anyway, thank you all very much. Uh, meeting adjourned at four fifty three, and we'll see y'all next month. Have a good month. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. <laughs> Well, Jack.